Hello, I'm Victor Pross. This is Liberty Talk Canada. And I'm Odessa Orlowitz. And I'm pretty excited to be able to expose some truth to Canadians. And that's what this podcast is all about. It is Liberty Talk Canada. We're going to be covering a lot of issues in this uh, brand new visual broadcast slash audio podcast. So uh, we do invite you to uh, subscribe, to like, and to share. A lot of the issues that we're going to be talking about in Liberty Talk Canada will be what's happening on the world stage affecting us all. And that is... COVID, of course. We'll be talking about other issues as well, but we're certainly going to be covering at a great extent uh, the COVID issue, as we do believe that we are not getting the facts from the mainstream establishment media, and, and that's why we created this cha- this station. Yeah, and in fact, I didn't think that I would be doing a YouTube channel trying to expose corruption three months ago. My husband and I were planning to go to London and thinking about things we can do with our kids. And it's out of sheer desperation that so many people are having to start YouTube channels to try to expose the truth. It's actually really sad. Um, Every time that I come across an article that's legitimate, science, um, scientists, doctors, neurologists, virologists, family doctors, everybody, um, the mainstream media will not show it. So we've gone from uh, a plague type event happening in China to let's flatten the curve to it's a flu and now there's this whole brainwashing of new normal and things that just aren't making sense so we're going to talk about what doesn't make sense and over the next say 20 episodes um you're going to figure out through our facts what's really going on here on month three and it's pretty corrupt um and everything is backed up by links um articles doctors we're not this is not opinion these are true facts and i have written to global ctv cbc along with i know hundreds of people that are writing them saying why are you not covering the truth why do you just keep saying social distance social distance masks masks when the truth has come out on month three about really everything to do with this virus so now there's this agenda that's happening our our media in Canada and elsewhere, are actually hiding true facts about COVID-19 to the point that it's criminal. And that's why we had to do a YouTube channel. Um, I'm actually sad the reason that I had to start a YouTube channel with Victor, but we have to do it. And the whole reason I'm doing it is because I have two sons. And if we don't stand up this generation that's had it so good in Canada until now, we haven't had to deal with any problems. Um Our kids are screwed, and too many people are lazy in Canada. They don't want to know. They're just going with the flow. Well, are you? When your kids say to you thirty years from now, "Where were you during this time? What were you doing?" I'm going to say I was trying to expose the truth and putting my ass on the line to do it. Yeah, and you know, at at the same time too, it's like we don't really have to make some major case to appeal to you to, to to listen to us. I have full confidence that. You know, you've probably been watching the mainstream media, getting a lot of information. You've been pumped up with fear and you probably just think it as it's a given. We're all into this together. The government's trying to help and blah, 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 blah. But there must be a side to you that has a measure of doubt. And that's exactly what we want to appeal to in this show. And to show you that that doubt is not completely unfounded, that there is corruption taking place. There, There is political corruption taking place around a virus. We're not saying that the virus is a hoax, that it's complete uh, make-believe. There is a virus. But to the extent of just how dangerous this virus is, that's what we're taking issue with and whether the uh, lockdowns were justified. Just like anybody else in Canada or the world for that matter, three months ago or so, when this whole thing hit, I was like, whoa, like what's going on here, right? Uh, you know, I've had previous, I have knowledge of uh, of history of other plagues, you know, the great plague of the 1600s or whatever, the Spanish flu in 1918. Yeah, you know, there's, there's pandemics and there's plagues and so forth. But we would argue in this that it is not as bad as the fear porn, as colloquial, the colloquial expression goes, fear porn is completely unjustified. And just like anybody else, I, I um, uh, when this oh, this whole thing hit, the narrative that we've been fed, and, and you 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 decide yourself, the narrative that you've probably accepted, that, well, what we were fed was that this is Mother Nature. 
there's there's this nasty uh, the pandemic. Mother Nature is just uh, rebelling against uh, capitalism and man-made production. And uh, everybody was caught off guard. We all got slapped upside of the head. And uh, just the governments are responding. Oh, we got to protect the citizenry. We just got to do what we got to do. Let's have a lockdown. You know, we're going to flatten the curve. We're going to do all this and things like that. But the truth is more complicated than that. So let's rewind and start right from the beginning. Three months ago, around March 15th, uh, we we already knew around December, January, especially January, that there was an out-of-control virus in Wuhan. The news was showing it to us. We were all going on alternative media to see new people dropping dead. Um, and we had no reason not to trust that this wasn't happening. We're citizens. We know that plagues happen. And it was very concerning I have a lot of Chinese friends, a lot of them go back and forth to China, and this was not a funny situation. So we were told what was going on, and I'm not going to say it's true or not true. I, I believe it to be true, what was going on in Wuhan. But after that, from that moment on, there are things that were done wrong, and I'm not trying to place blame, but literally my 14-year-old son had better ideas about what's going on just watching the news saying, why this? Why this? Mommy, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. And I said, I know. It doesn't make sense. And, and he, he was like, but, but I thought these people were professionals. I thought the WHO is supposed to like help us. So right from the beginning, there was red flags. And the first one was Teresa Tam, among others at The Who, decided that we're just going to keep our borders open a little bit longer. So I, as just a civilian, knew that this was spreading like wildfire, and I knew that they were still letting people in from Wuhan. So, you know, I said to my husband, surely they're going to shut the borders tonight. Oh, okay, surely tomorrow, surely this week. Two weeks later, they shut the borders. And now we're locked down. We are, All our lives are screwed up. So Teresa Tam is like, no, no, no. Let's just let two weeks more worth of people with this deadly virus in. So what's up with that? Why? Why? What do you think? Well, I think like I think government officials themselves are were doing a lot of uh, scrambling about and, uh, and and trying to figure out best how to to cope with the situation. They were caught off guard too. That doesn't speak for every politician the world over. A lot of this has been planned out in a, in, in an advance. That's you know for further podcasts. But there were politicians. That responded very differently mm -hmm. depending upon what country or province uh, they happen to be living. It's very different things that were going on in Toronto than what happened uh, uh, that's happening here in uh, Vancouver or New York and whatnot. But a lot of politicians were scrambling around trying to best how to deal with this. However, let's talk about a standing rule, though, when it comes mm -hmm. to the government. Okay, the, the old adage is is that never let a good disaster go to waste. Okay, Clinton's Which, favorite. Clinton's favorite line. Yeah. Clinton, Clinton, just think of the mile uh, knee deep guck of corruption that takes place right there. And that's her favorite line. And it was further along in this process that we realized, wow, they really have used and abused this. But what I could not believe, considering most Canadians, I'm not going to get into a race war, most Canadians living in neighborhoods, I've lived in all of the different neighborhoods. I've had quite a checkered, colorful past of the east side, the west side, Abbotsford, uh, living down in um, downtown, Cole Harbor, um, the Osler area. I mean, I, I've had neighbors of all different color sizes, races, um, sexual orientations, and everyone just kind of gets along as long as you're not too loud and your dog's not bugging someone. Really, everyone kind of gets along and once in a while they don't, you hear about it on the news. But then there's a deadly virus coming and we didn't want to offend the Chinese by shutting our borders. Now, what's totally wrong about that is if this was coming from Australia or India or New York, I would expect the exact same response. Shut the borders now. But instead, they dicked around with this. Oh, it's racist. It's racist. We don't want to upset the Chinese. Now I understand why they were using that. But back then, even like I said, my son is like, that's why we're not shutting the borders. This is who's running our world. I'm like, yep. So this whole this whole thing of right speak and wrong speak is what's gotten in the way. I mean, I have Chinese friends who are saying, why are we not shutting the borders? It's okay for them to say it. But if we say it, then all of a sudden, 
Oh, what's that term everyone's using now? If you want to expose truth, no matter what color you are, Nazi. <laughs> yeah, Nazi. Yeah, and that raises another point too. Mm-hmm. This is that uh, we're not going to reveal necessarily, not in this first episode in, in, anyway, our uh, political affiliations because we're not coming I from the standpoint. I don't have any. I don't have any. Yeah, and, and it's completely irrelevant anyway. I could say I'm a liberal. I could say I'm a conservative. I could I could say I'm a libertarian. I could uh, I could say that I'm a a, a Khazar in a previous life. It doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. All we're concerned about is the truth, the facts. That's it. And so uh, when you're making comments, guys, we don't care if you're going to call us names because we know that we're here to expose truth, no matter what color, affiliation, gender, non-gender, mixed gender, woman, man, Christian, Muslim. We are not here for that. Anyone that tries to label us has serious educational deficiencies in their brain. And we're literally going to laugh at you. And have fun putting in the comments that we're something that you want to box us into because we're just pissed off at the corruption going on and the mainstream media literally stifling true doctors coming forward who are freaking out about what's going on. So let's just get to it. Starting three weeks ago, the whole idea of what we were told was that was it's a temporary measure, you know, like uh, when go out there, we're going to we're going to flatten the curve hibernate, lock yourself up into your kennel, uh, get some uh, tidbits, get some uh, Dunkin' Donuts, get some, uh, get, get, the, get us, get us uh, uh, tons and tons of toilet paper. Canada, lock down the world, lock down. What we have to do is flatten the curve. I'm and sure you've all heard Ronnie that expression. Henry said, going into this, see, if we rewind three months, we have been so manipulated and brainwashed 12 weeks later. You know, we've forgotten what they said in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, Bonnie Henry came on, and I'm not shitting on Bonnie Henry. She's at the very bottom of this food chain. So she's caught in a rock in a hard place. But we're just going to flatten the curve two weeks, three weeks. Just flatten the curve. And the whole purpose of flattening the curve was so that the hospitals aren't so overwhelmed that there's no room for all the COVID patients, as well as people who have other disease or emergencies. That is what we were told. That is why we locked down. And it happened. We flattened the curve quite a long time ago. Yeah, The exactly. hospitals have been sitting empty. I know two doctors that said, I treated one person for COVID and I sat there for a month. One of them was downtown doing nothing. Our hospitals, guys, I hate to tell you this, our hospitals have been empty with just a few people in each one with COVID and mainstream media doesn't want to talk about it. And keep in mind, too, understand what flatten the curve means. Okay, it had nothing at no point, at no point, not not as alternative media or conspiracy theorists or anything like that. At no point, according to government officials, was the virus said to be something that we're going to uh, reduce the numbers. It was just a matter of flattening the curve. I can put the analogy this way. Just to imagine any given week. You know, uh, during peak rush hours at five o'clock, you know, you can get traffic jams. It causes a lot of trouble, a lot of backup and things like that. that's what was flattening the curve was all about so that the hospitals would not be overwhelmed, just like you would have not to be overwhelmed in traffic with bumper to bumper uh, five o'clock peak hours. But you take a different part of the week, uh, Sunday, let's say a Sunday afternoon, you don't have that problem, but it has nothing to do with how many cars were on the road during that week. It was not about reducing the people that were going to uh, uh, contract this virus. It had nothing to do with reducing the numbers. It was all a matter of just spreading it out out so that the hospitals would not be overwhelmed. And that was said to be like, what, two weeks a month at the most? Yeah. That was the propaganda. Yeah. Now, forward. And and, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because I want to give. We didn't know. Had I not known about Event 201, which we'll talk about a little bit today in, in another episode, had I not been shown these website, the websites, there's two of them planning this event, um, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that we did not know what we were dealing with, and I am going to trust the doctors, the news, the government. But since flattening the curve, do you not notice that everything they said, they're going back on their word, and nothing makes sense now? I want to I want to talk about Swiss policy research. So this is one of many many doctors trying to come forward to expose the truth. I wrote to Global, CBC, CTV. Why are you guys not covering 
these research documents that have come out from virologists, neurologists, scientists, um, and doctors saying something's not right here. Uh, they one of them said we'll get back to you, and the others didn't respond. All we hear is propaganda actors saying, keep your distance, social distance, masks, 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 wear your mask, that means caring, social distance, tracking, 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 tracking. Can we get any real news about what's really going on? Real things are happening right now behind the scenes, and our mainstream media in Canada refuses to talk about it. And all we're getting is just this brainwashing NLC, I don't know what it is, anyone with a psychology degree can see what's going on with our mainstream news. They refuse to report on the biggest things being uncovered. That's why we ha- we have to do this. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, and, and, and just to like to stress the point, okay, remember, flatten the curve a couple of weeks. We've gone from that, which at the beginning, all very well could be very reasonable. We didn't know what we were dealing with. But now, Three months later, we're talking about contract tracing. We're talking about this will be the new normal until the vaccine is developed. That's my best Trudeau impression. Yeah, keep six feet apart. For what reason now? Six feet apart is like sheer nonsense. Now I've heard, maybe, I don't know if you heard about this. Did you hear about, yeah, I I heard about this. This was like developed by a a 15-year-old girl doing a science project or something like that. Hey, Sally, how do you... We want people to get a virus. What are we going to do to prevent that? Well, they should stand. I don't know. I like six foot guys. So yeah, yeah six feet apart. That's it. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, well, what? We're getting, oh. we're getting instructed by 15 year olds. And this is something that has stuck. And you, you can see that now the governments the world over, not everywhere, but for the most part, are doubling down, doubling down, even though there is critical voices coming up to the surface challenging all this and not just the doctors just the general population there's a great segment of the population that's starting to question this but they're not letting up on the narrative they're pushing forward canada is one of the worst to be honest i'm embarrassed right now i'm embarrassed and i i grew up here okay so one place that i would like canadians and everybody else this is this show is for everyone but i'm just hoping that some canadians will watch this show and get off their asses because we're in big shit here if we don't Swiss Policy Research is a document that's been put out. It was um, updated June, that's this month. Um, and I'm going to read you the top, uh, well, oh God, there's, oh, there's 30 of them. <laughs> so this is a massive document and you can read it instead of watching mainstream narrative. You need to read this. Go online. You can read the whole thing. Halfway through it, you'll probably be really angry. Is there uh, links that we could provide to this? A Swiss policy research on Google. Yeah, okay. COVID-19. So they had to give an overview. This is written, again, like I said, by scientists, doctors. Um, they got a bunch of doctors and scientists together from the entire world who knew that something very deviant is actually going on. Hmm. So in the overview... Number one, according to the latest immunological and serological studies, the overall lethality of COVID-19 is about 0.1% and thus in the range of a strong seasonal flu. What happens here in Canada if you dare say it's a flu? You just get ripped to shreds, shamed. Oh, you probably don't wear masks either. The shaming going on right now is so disgusting Because I'm backed up with facts, and people who have facts are now called Nazis. The world is literally upside down. Yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, the uh, there's there's a a lot of alternative sources that you can go to beyond you know uh, us that you can you can check this all this information out yourself. All of this information is just a click away. Funny thing though is is that now that we you know we're living in the information age, the internet age. You know, when I was a young guy. You know, I, you had to go to a library. <laughs> you had to go to a bookstore. All of this information is a click away. And at the same time, too, we know that, uh, you know, uh, previous to the Internet, we were kind of like just wholly dependent upon mainstream media. I mean, it was like a Truman Show uh, a dome, you know, where whatever whatever narrative they fed you, that's the truth. But now we have a lot of alternative voices coming out uh, uh, speaking against this. And thank God, because the timing is that the mainstream news 
has got worse every year. I used to laugh at Trump when he goes, fake news, fake news. And I'm like, oh, Trump, he's such a banana. Fake news, fake news. I didn't realize that he was right. That's how dumb I was three months ago. And I'm not a, for Trump. I'm a Canadian. I'm not for anybody. But CNN is probably the worst place to get information. The lies are just so bad. Um, anyways, okay, let me do number two. Sure. In countries like the U.S., the U.K., and also Sweden, without a lockdown in Sweden, yes. overall mortality since the be- beginning of the year is in the range of a strong influenza season. In countries like Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, overall mortality is in the range of a mild influenza season. This information, so this is updated in June. They've been trying to get this information since about a month after it started, when we started to see the real numbers. As soon as we started to see the real numbers, why was the lockdown not stopped and our, and our economy saved? And people who are not going in for their checkups or their surgeries or their their cancer screenings, we should have just gone, okay, we did a good job stopping more of the spread. Uh, It's not as bad as we thought. Open up. Instead, real news is getting pushed to the side. Exactly, yeah. And some of the other alternative uh, uh, sources that we can uh, uh, speak to you about, Mm -hmm. we have the Swiss policy research. We also have... An article uh, by Gwen Morgan, and this one just came out on, on uh, June 10th of this year, 2020. The lockdown contrarians were right. After being all but locked down since mid-March, Canadians emerging to face the incomprehensible damage that has occurred in just 12 weeks. We have to ask the question, too, is, is the uh, solution, uh, is, is it better or worse? Than what the initial problem was. Okay, that's that's the real issue here. And why? And, and if this is going to continue on, if we're going to go now, they're talking about a second wave. Do you do you see the corruption here that's taking place? So uh, besides the um, uh, besides the patients and the valiant frontline workers who who uh, succumbed to a COVID nineteen virus, we're going to talk about those people that are vulnerable. Uh, shutting down large sectors of the economy caused. Thousands of lost businesses, millions of lost jobs, and billions, perhaps trillions, in lost savings. And so for those people who go, well, you know, you're talking about economics. You're talking about finances. We're talking about human rights. We're talking about lives. That's the most idiotic position or statement that you can make. This uh, shutting down the uh, people losing their life savings, losing their jobs, uh, becoming a government de- uh, dependent, and the, the suicides and the depressions. Uh, the, uh, the depression. Look at we 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 uh, have to rely on the economy. We have to be productive, working people in order to survive, and also to help those people who happen to be more vulnerable, who can't not fend for themselves, who do have compromised uh, um, immune systems, who are elderly. I f- I feel like it's just let's shame the people that talk about the economy. Let's shame them. We aren't talking about the economy right here. It is a seasonal flu. It took a while to figure that out. So, no, it's a seasonal flu. And it's terrible that the elderly every year pass away. It's terrible that a flu might have taken them a little bit earlier. It's going to happen to me. Um, I don't want to give my opinion on what what I would do at my age. And I would just say bye. But anyways, uh, because I don't want my kids' whole lives to be destroyed because Granny wants six more months on Earth. And you know what? The elderly are not even saying this. This is a bad flu. And what pisses me off is it's the way that the elderly home care was dealt with in these old age homes. It's actually genocide how it was handled. They, They made these rules that just ensured higher numbers of covid and put our grandma and grandpas at risk. And then we're supposed to have schools locked down. My kid can't play soccer because of the disgusting way that the elderly were treated during COVID. It literally turned out to be genocide. The things coming forward. I'm not sure exactly what the rules were in Canada, but in the States, people were so irate. If an elderly person got tested for COVID and they had it, They had to go back to the retirement home that they came from. They weren't separated to a nice hotel room with a nurse 
and a doctor, which would have cost the world a lot less to have everyone have a private nurse and a private doctor, nutritional food, and their own place. It would have cost a lot less to do that. Instead, they brought all these elderly together, kept them. The, the virus jumped and jumped and jumped and jumped through all of these elderly. It was a perfect recipe for death. And the rest of us are paying for the way it was handled. Now, three months ago, I made a statement on Facebook. And now doctors are saying we should have done it that way. People tried to rip me a new asshole. And it's like the thought police, you know, because people are thought police now. I said, wouldn't it make more sense if anybody who's vulnerable with disease at any age, diabetes, obesity, asthma, allergy, and the elderly, if they quarantined comfortably, we need to provide them with everything they need, maybe even a nicer home than normal, get all these institutions to offer up their place, and they are quarantined while we get herd immunity. And I was just torn this and, and asshole you're that and you're a fucking bitch. And you know what? This is what the doctors are saying we should have done. And what pisses me off is the majority of deaths, especially in Canada, on the Swiss policy report, Canada is specifically named as having the most, most deaths in the seniors' homes. And then because of the way that they were treated and forced to be together. Um, but then if I don't social distance from my cousin, then I'm an asshole. Okay, yeah, and you know what? There's more to pick up there. I think we just scratched the surface. We just gave you a basic uh, ushering in of an introduction of what we're going to be talking about in this podcast. So I do, again, urge you, please, subscribe, like, and share. Uh, we're going to close this out now. We're going to pick this up in the next episode. Probably we'll have a back-to-back -back in tandem, right? We can do that probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for you know these first uh, two episodes. So we're going to close out now. We're just we just scratched the surface. We're going to pick up and talk about stats, scientific, objective fact stats. No opinion, uh, running off on the mouth or just whatever I happen to think is uh, the, uh, the truth. We'll all back all back all this up. Okay, uh, so we do. Well, I want to thank you for uh, tuning in. My name is uh, Victor Pross, and I'm Odessa Orlowitz. And thank you for listening. This is Liberty Talk Canada. See you again. Thank you.